Got the sun just coming up behind us. And I wanted to take a look today, different types of lures and how to fish them. Very, very broad and basic, but we've got soft plastics. Uh, you can drag these across the boulders, through weeds, tuck that hook away, and you can get away with fishing some really snaggy conditions. Similarly, with the weighted, these tend to drop down and lift up. Take a look at some surface lures and what you want to do with those. You're not retrieving these in in the same sort of way. Another example of a surface lure is this Popchinko, the 140. And we'll have a look at those hound type lures. These are lures that float. When you bring them back in, they'll be just sitting underneath the surface. Now, it's really hard to show you exactly how I'm working these lures because all depends on the conditions. You could have tide pushing right in towards you, moving left to right, and that will dictate how fast, of course, you're retrieving. With these soft plastics, for example, this is a, a pirate lure. You're doing as little as possible um, but you do rely on a little bit of tide for that and you're just staying in contact trying to keep them upright fishing it upside down as well we'll come on to that so surface lures float and you retrieve them across the surface of the water tends to be an, another one of those bait fish in distress uh, always look it's always worth getting a good splash uh, perhaps leaving the lure to start off with see if any fish investigate bass are quite inquisitive uh, and then when you retrieve the lure, uh, this is the longing Frankie here, and sort of has that left-right movement as well. Don't be afraid to drag the lure, stop it um, mid-retrieve as well. The taps can work, and then that left-right correction sort of thing. So the lure looks like it's going to the left, then to the right, like that, as we can see there on that Pachenko. And as I say, don't be afraid to just leave the lure as well. This is something slightly different. You see this is a spitting wire. Again, one of those bait fish that has perhaps come up to the surface. Uh, and you're just creating a lot of disturbance on the surface of the water. Um, cracking way to fish this, you can use the tide in your favour uh, and get it into certain spots and then drag the lure and actually here even though that water is not particularly clear and actually on that occasion it was fished really fast uh, but you don't need to it spits pushes the water out and can be really effective this is a bent minnow uh, I can't remember the brand actually I'll put it down there um, so this is a wounded bait fish that sits on the surface of the water so you're not going to retrieve it at 90 miles an hour uh, you just want to sort of drag it a bit flip it and then wait now we talk about soft plastics you can have weighted heads like you've got there um, or unweighted as you'll see in there and you can see the difference obviously that weighted head brings a lure quickly down uh, it looks very unnatural with that head first action it's not how bait fish look. Um, so the idea with those lead-headed ones, obviously a lot better off in deeper water. The main thing with those shads with the weighted head is you want to keep that fish looking as natural as possible, like a bait fish. So rather than going up and down, up and down through the water table, once you've found out that feeding area of the bass, you really want to be using the tide to keep that lure as horizontal as possible. Uh, and you let the tail section do the work there to make it look realistic. I do much prefer using these soft plastics without the weighted head. This here is a sluggo, this is a nine inch soft plastic, slightly weighted in the hook, and it's a slower retrieve, this one. Still past the right. You can bounce all these lures off the bottom if you're considering the bass to be a bit lethargic, particularly early season, then why not just bring the lure across the bottom, across the sea bottom, that way, <laughs> you're more likely to get snags um, but it could be where the bass are feeding almost tempting them out of their, their little holes there whatever lure you are using it's always worth knowing what that tide's doing to your braid um, as the waves or the tide 
start to make a bow in your line you still need to keep in contact with that lure you can feel what a fish does as it comes in or you're hooking it it's always good to have a visual understanding of what your lure is doing uh, whether that's the tide that's causing that bow in the line or whether you're fishing around an obstruction something like a harbour wall and that'll affect how your lure is fishing on the other end cast a sluggo now doesn't mind these snaggier conditions try and keep the rod tip high for this one just to keep the nose of the fish up and it's really just like a slow lazy retrieve So a lot of these subsurface lures sit about two or three foot down off the surface. I really like these, um, very old fashioned, terrible to cast. <laughs> when you retrieve, it will get deeper and deeper. So it's good for fishing around some of these boulders here. Uh, I'll show you the sort of cast it does. By comparison, not very good. Really have to punch through it. But good enough to catch fish. So you can feel it sort of tapping away. vary where my the tip of the rod is so we're coming up to a boulder now I'm just going to leave it sort of vary the height of the rod tip a lot depends on what I've got in, directly in front of me so if I've got to try and keep that rod tip a little bit higher that's for every sort of lure. Uh, but here, there's not much of a tide on. Reading in the slack and then just sort of using the tip to bring that in. And then of course you can, you can just wind in solidly like that. But you will tend to pick up the snags like that because it'll just keep going deeper. Yeah, see? <laughs> so we've hit a snag. I'm just going to wait to see if it'll float up. Got single hooks on this one, makes it easier. Do you know what? We're almost <laughs> going to lose another lure here. So we've got a Komomo 2 here, got single hooks on this one. This is normally with a tip down, a uh, little tap. So it sits really high up in the water, basically just subsurface. Uh, it's quite buoyant, I suppose. So this is an X wrap lure, this is quite a heavier lure. Uh, I think it's about 20 grams um, and I've tied it on there with a little rapala knot. Flicks of the tip of this rod. It's worth mentioning this is a Shimano Dialuna which is quite a thin tipped rod anyway. You're sort of maxed out at 20 grams. Uh, so I tend to use the rod more. Can add a little bit of life just twitching that tip. What you don't want is slack in the line like that. A casual sort of flick out will be like this. Dead straight. And I want to be casting up tide to bring the lure back down generally. That's how bait fish will move in the water. So it's a mixture of drags really. If you see I'm just sort of dragging that lure. Reeling in the slack. A fast retrieve with these. So if you wanted to add a little bit more power to the cast, come straight on like that. So I've just lost the lure, a new leader with this because it's obviously gone across the rocks. I've added tension from the top of this, the rod here. And then you take the, just wanted to show that you can quickly tie an FG knot. This is tension here from the braid. You lay the fluorocarbon across like that tied it around my finger just to get a bit of tightness and then you sort of hold it at three o'clock like that and then you're moving the fluorocarbon up one side so you're going on to the running end the standing end of the line and when you get a good practice on like that you should be able to go two three four 
maybe about eight times and so there we've already tied the knot um, just want to tighten that up now and all I'm going to do with this end is two overhand knots cut it a little bit shorter once bite down like that nice and tight and nice and tight that's the SG knot done I just need to trim two bits of line tuck them away in a bag like that and I just pinch there should be able to tie that in a minute there you go nice and tight And then I'll feather the cast with my left hand, I'm right handed. So you can afford to play around with this one. Drag, really quite quickly. Getting little taps from the rocks. And I'm straight in thinking it's a fish. 